You are a beautiful, beautiful butterfly. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. This is the Alien Resurrection and this the deluxe newborn action figure. Two hundred years after her death, military scientists on board the USM Auriga are attempting to clone Ellen Ripley in order to extract the xenomorph queen embryo that was in her body when she died, and on the eighth attempt, they succeed. Contaminated with Ripley's DNA, the queen gives birth to a grotesque human-alien hybrid called the Newborn, which escapes, forcing the crew into a desperate race to destroy its and the other cloned aliens before the ship reaches Earth. So the very first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the newborn stands. You'll excuse me that I did include this stand, the black stand that is, you can see it right there. I did include it as part of the figure's total height. I feel personally that the figure is not going to stand on its own, so I think for displaying it for height, I think I'm going to factor that in as part of its overall height, if that's okay with you guys. So from the base, because the base is going to add a little bit of extra, you know, a little higher clearance for the figure. I'm including that, and you're looking at a figure totally, totally radical, 10.3 inches in height, about 10 and a half inches in height. And switching that over to centimeters, you're looking at the figure of the new resurrection newborn, standing 26.3, almost 26 and a half centimeters tall. Yes, as I've said, the figure really will not stand on its own, but I did want to include that at the beginning of this review. You could, I'm sure, with a little bit of tweaking and finessing, finally get the figure to stand upright. But because it's so top-heavy, because of the size of its head, and the lanky nature of its body and limbs, it really won't allow the figure to stand proper, at least not that I've been able to find. So for that reasoning, and that's why I kept the base at the beginning of this review, the base of which we will be having a look at right now. Done in black plastic, surprisingly enough. This is the same dynamic, I think they were called dynamic stands that NECA had produced at one point. Very limited run of them. I had picked them up, but it was this type of stand with the adjusted uh, kind of ratcheted joint up at the top that you could bring the neck up and down. But these were released standalone. The neck I had sold these in clear plastic. Now, clear plastic could have worked for this newborn. I'm actually glad, other than the fact it's a magnet for fingerprints, that they went black than anything else. I kind of look at it more so that it's the actual support strut for possibly the puppet that would have come from the film. I mean, the details on the newborn is so good. How good is it? Well, we'll look at that in a second. That I feel adding a black stand to it kind of enhances the fact that it does feel like if somebody was to walk into your room, it feels more like something, was that actually screen used? You can lie and be a fibber face about it and say, yeah, that was, I picked this up. It was directly released. Uh, it was released right after the film was produced. I was able to pick up the original screen used puppet till of course somebody looks at it and says, well, why does it say NECA on it? And then you quickly shoot them out of your collection room. Uh, as for the stand itself, yes, done in plastic, it does have the ratcheted back section like the original stands did possess. They were stubborn at first. I found a little bit of extra pressure to it and you can see you can ratchet those in single units until you get the full height that you want to have. From there, it's also an adjustable knuckle joint right there. And there's also a secondary knuckle joint right at the top there. That you can get different poses for this particular newborn. Now, for me, I'm not going to probably have it in any more of a unique pose than probably what you're currently seeing. Minus, of course, for the fact it's laying down on the job right now. Uh, one thing also it does have this particular stand is this section here doesn't rotate. Uh, how they're connected, let me just pop this off here. It's done by a hexagonal shape. So when you are putting in place, I guess they did that so it wouldn't get loose over time. Speaking of loose, we'll talk about that in a second. But it doesn't allow you to rotate the post. You pretty much have to pull it off, rotate it, and then pop it back into place. Then you have the, the actual clamp section right here, which I will say has gotten loose. Uh, fixed simply by just adding a screwdriver 
tightening up that screw right there and you can make it a lot tighter than it was before. Also one thing too you may want to have is have the joint up the top here rather than on the bottom. So that is the adjustable stand. Not bad and of course a much needed inclusion accessory for the newborn because it simply just will not stand without it. We'll go ahead and move this to the side. We'll pick up the newborn coddling it and holding it in your arms, hoping to nurse it back into a relatively calm state. Because after all, the newborn is a bit of a sporadic creature in the ill-fated Alien Resurrection. Actually, one of the things I did like about it was the fact that they did come up with a logical reason as to why Ripley could exist as well as the Xenomorphs. Up to the point of Alien 3, at the very end of it, we knew Ripley was long gone, along with the the embryo, the uh, hugger, that would have been also the chestburster inside of her would have been the queen. But of course, with that being sealed off, her fate sealed off, we really didn't know how they could have brought her back. Fast forward and ahead in time and movie making time frame, we did finally get ourselves Alien Resurrection. And again, a really neat aspect of that film was the fact that you had spliced DNA. By this time, Ripley 8, the eighth attempt at cloning the original Ellen Ripley, succeeded. But along the ways, her bit of DNA, as well as the Xenomorph's DNA, kind of played with each other, sort of in the same way that uh, the Brundle fly from the remake of the fly kind of worked the same way, or the original fly also was the same thing as well. I like the idea that you did have a queen that no longer could lay eggs. Her egg sac was in instead replaced with a womb. And instead of mass producing multiple eggs, the queen gave birth to the newborn. And this is the creature that we have now. The creature is interesting in the sense that it is part hybrid of both xenomorph and human. There's not a lot of human in it. Most, if not all, the human probably resides in the fact that the skin is more of a translucent kind of pale color. And most definitely where the details come into play is the sculpting in the face. The face does mimic more the human aspect of it, where this the xenomorph dome is now long gone, and instead in its place is more like a human skeletal remain. Uh, one thing I always liked about the film with these with the actual newborn, I like this little ridge right here. NECA has quite perfectly mirrored that in the figure, and I like just that little bridge right there that would have been the top of, again, like the front of the skeletal for the human end of things. Gone are the dome, of course, like I said, we had already discussed the fact that the dome is completely omitted here, but instead what you get is quite recessed eyes, and I don't know if those are the actual eyes, because really in the film they're more like just dark pockets of black. You see them off and on depending on which way the light hits it. Again, also with this particular release is they've sculpted in the teeth. The interior of the jaw is done in a dark wash to an otherwise kind of reddish color. I did notice when I did get this out of the packaging that the head, being that it's on two ball joints essentially, this was brought a little bit further down like this. And uh, I did think that that doesn't look right. There's a big noticeable gap. Well, the one thing you do have to do is when you get this out of the packaging is just take the head and just shift it up shift it up and also just bring it down and it does of course leave still the noticeable section in which the head is going to rotate but at the very least you've still got more of a seamless transition between the back section of the of the torso all the way to the front section of the head i really do like that head sculpt quite a bit I may be of the very small minority that actually liked Alien Resurrection. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. But it did have interesting aspects brought into the play. Again, the idea of cloning Ripley, the idea of the Queen now having human traits, and for the fact that now instead of multiple uh, multiple Xenomorphs, you've got one. You've got one, uh, one newborn. It's not a he or she, it's sort of just an it and it goes around and kills basically everything except for the alien, except for Ripley 8. Uh, having some close-up looks at some other details here on it, all of the figure seems to be making use of this translucent, kind of cream-colored plastic. Sprinkled along there is, along there, is some additional kind of greenish gray color on the top here. Instead of the actual dome of the Xenomorph, which we normally would recognize, they kind of have makeshift a dome that sort of plays the same way. 
it's now embedded to the actual skeletal head here of the newborn, but it kind of does mimic the same way the dome would look normally on a xenomorph. Very elongated arms are something also a trait to the uh, newborn here. Very long arms, but still rather familiar looking xenomorph fingers. Although the fingers here look a little bit more human than they are xenomorph. You can see it kind of looks like a more of a witch hand. Very long fingers and smaller fingernails, if you want to call them more fingernails, than the claws that the xenomorph would normally possess. Again, you've got that coloring, the offset coloring of the darker green happening here on the side. Overall, just like a really neat slick coat sheen that they've added over top of it. This clear coat sort of adds to a bit of that kind of wet surface that the newborn would have in the film. And I really like that they've mimicked this here in the actual body. When you get down to the legs, the legs are spindly in nature. It's just the way that it's designed in the film. You got to imagine they had a lot of fun designing this particular character because really up to that point they had kind of rules in place for how to design and how to construct a xenomorph. You could play off of the original designs and tweak it a little bit slightly, but you really had to still keep it to the core idea of what xenomorphs look like. The newborn was a great opportunity now for them to branch off and do something different, still part xenomorph, still part human, but all around just a really gruesome looking character. As mentioned, the legs are very spindly. You get a little bit more of that darker green now coming into play here. In fact, it seems to get more, more darker green as you move your way down the figure here. Very more, it's not quite xenomorph limbs. You can see it does have kind of the muscle fibers that a human body would have. And it almost even seems to mimic having human bones sticking out from the sides here. It's a really neat, like I said, amalgamation bringing two creatures together, humans and xenomorphs. You've got the arched hind legs here, so you've got the bend in the knee here and the bend in the hind leg at the back ankle section. And then you've still got the very faithful articulation in the feet. This can come into play and a bit of a problem when it comes to displaying and standing the figure because you really have a lot working against it. Because you have hind leg hinge joints here, this eventually will be something that could get loose on you, just because you are supporting a lot of the weight on those joints. Bends at the knees could also become problematic over time, just with, again, frequent bending and moving of the legs. Just it's natural that you're going to have like joints starting to get develop a bit looseness as you you know, as you have the finger for the figure for longer periods of time. One thing again can work and assist in its favor is the fact, yes, indeed, it does have, yes, I said the display stand that we had a look at before can kind of support and cradle the newborn in the way that hopefully the queen would have nurtured and cradled the newborn until of course the newborn kills it and slices the head off. Just really happy with how this one turned out though. It's not really a figure I was expecting that NECA would eventually do. I guess it would be eventual that NECA would give us a figure based on this because they have done pretty much all the Xenomorphs and Ripley's leading up to this point. I guess the natural logical solution would be that we would get ourselves also a Xenomorph uh, human hybrid here with the newborn. But again, it's really neat to finally physically see this in hand. I'm wondering if they could actually reuse this mold again, perhaps for the likes of pu uh, Pumpkinhead. Because I'm looking at this, and I know there are things that aren't Pumpkinhead-like to this, but definitely has Pumpkinhead-like features to it, that I'm wondering if they could reuse the mold again. Tweak it slightly and give us an ultimate pumpkin head. Just FYI, NECA toys. Let's have a look at the posability on this delightful chap. Uh, as we've already looked at, the head is on a double bowl joint. So it allows the head to shift up and down on that first bowl joint and also allows it to head to rotate all the way around. I really don't know why you would want to have the head rotate all the way around like this, but it does lend itself to bending the head and rotating head in different angles that you wouldn't normally be able to accomplish just simply by having that single ball joint. It does leave a bit of a gap. The gap is noticeable in certain poses, but again, it's something that they just couldn't avoid because for you to be able to do as much as this, they have to allow, of course, enough clearance in here so you will see a bit of a gap. The upper torso does have a ball joint. Not as generous as I was hoping. The hinge joint, I think a lot of it is because even though it does have the ball joint 
where you can rotate the body. There's still a lot of stuff that seems to be restricting it. I don't know if it's just the top section of its torso. It just really doesn't allow you to generously move the body back and forth as much as you would really want. Of course, can't forget the fact that it does have a hinge joint in its head, so you can hinge that and open that up and down if you want. If you want to have it anguishly screaming at the very end of the film, you can pull that off if you want. The arms rotate all the way around. Now the whole figure is done in translucent plastic, although I am looking at the joints on the insides of the arms, that would be the telltale sign if we're going to have problems with the figure down the road. It does seem like it's using solid plastic, so the gone are the days of the using the clear plastic pegs, which those figures would be very notorious for breaking. It seems that NECA toys are using solid plastic pegs, so that's good. Uh, the arms rotate all the way around. Uh, the elbows are on a single hinge and double hinge, giving you a double bend in the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around. They hinge back and forth. The legs split out. They go forward, they go back. Does have a very generous, quite the generous bend in the knee there. Uh, the hind leg also does have a back hinge joint, which also allows the lower leg to rotate. And the feet also hinge up and down as well. In case you are wondering, the newborn does have peg holes on the undersides of its feet. Honestly speaking, I haven't tried this yet, but I don't think it's nearly enough stability on this particular figure that you could make use of a clear stand. I just happen to use, just happen to have a clear stand from NECA Toys nearby. I'm going to attach this into the foot here. Consider this a science test. We're going to do a bit of an experiment here on our in this video, see if I can actually get this to stably stand. Stably stand? I don't know if that's a word. Well, it does stand somewhat. But again, the biggest problem with a figure like this is you're taking all the problematic issues with normal NECA Xenomorph figures. The fact that their hind legs are very notorious for developing loose joints because there is a lot more plastic being utilized up at the top there, much more top heaviness with the newborn. I do fear that if you wanted to use a regular stand, you will start probably developing looseness in the joints. All the more reasoning why NECA Toys included this, all the more reasoning why if you do have this figure, I would probably be using something like this and not using necessarily a conventional circular display stand. I don't really know why I didn't think NECA Toys would ever give us a newborn. I guess it's just the fact that I look at Alien Resurrection as sort of the black sheep of the Alien franchise. Many people would almost even argue Alien 3 was just as bad. But I really was surprised, if anything else. But I guess if I look at it, history has shown us that really up to this point, every incarnation of a xenomorph that's existed across the film's franchise, NECA Toys has released in plastic form, so logically, why not? Newborn should have really been part of that list. And of course, the proof is in the pudding, the fact that we finally get ourselves a deluxe version of the newborn figure. It's a really neat design. One of my only few things I liked about Alien Resurrection, I didn't really like the characters, the human elements, but I did like the fact that Ripley was cloned and brought back. That somewhat of the xenomorph still lived into the surface of her DNA and vice versa with the alien queen, who is now part human as well. It's a really neat dynamic, something again that Alien Resurrection really tried to do and tried to do differently. The end result was, of course, critics alike and fans of the franchises just didn't really like Alien Resurrection, and I can certainly see why. One of the best aspects for me was the newborn, and that was pretty much it, and of course the clone of Ripley. Still, though, this is a really neat release from NECA Toys. Thinking outside the box, of course, you would have to think outside the box when a design of newborn comes into plates. Definitely doesn't make use of similar molds. Maybe the legs might have been used at some point, not the upper thigh area, but maybe the lower legs were really used from another mold. It's hard to say. NECA Toys has really released a whole ton of alien figures over the years anyway, so it's really hard to pinpoint what reuses of mold that they've done. I really think when it all is said and done, probably newborn is a brand new mold. So if they want to get as much bang for their buck out of their existing molds, of course, they're all for that. Maybe something that I proposed in this review, and NECA can take that with a grain of salt, but maybe possibly use some of newborn's elements and breed a brand new creature with an ultimate pumpkin head. Just an FYI.
ultimate pumpkin head. If you did manage to pick up this figure for yourself, let me know down below. How cool is the Deluxe Newborn? I know, I know, the movie's not that great. But the Newborn, though, is a pretty neat looking figure. And I'm really glad I'm now able to add this to my collection. If you guys managed to pick up the Alien Resurrection Deluxe Newborn action figure for yourself, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of it. Or, based on this review, maybe you just haven't picked it up yet, based on this review, what do you guys think of the figure? Always like reading your comments down below. Speaking of also down below, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Make sure as well you swing on, swing on over and turn that bell notification on. That will guarantee that when new videos coming onto this channel, you'll never miss out. Don't be the person that's missing out on newer videos coming onto this channel because there's always new stuff coming on. Sometimes I can't even believe how many videos are coming onto this channel, but we keep churning them out. Just keep churning them out. Either way, guys, as always, thanks for watching, as you always do. Weigh in down below what you guys think of the Alien Resurrection Deluxe Newborn action figure, and I'll see you guys next time.